Hey, good morning, it's Anamik from the Academy for Soul Based Coaching and uh, welcome back to my home office. Well, actually not my home office, but this is the office that I love to work in most. Um, our forest. It's still early, so you can probably tell. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to talk to you today about what it is that makes you feel so good in coaching and actually what makes you feel best when you're coaching and helping people. Of course it starts with that, doesn't it? That thing where you are helping people, you get to make a difference for people. Not just any difference, but the, you get to help them make a change that makes an enormous impact in their lives because they feel differently or because they finally see the choice that they want to make or they have the courage to take the step that they've been dreading or they have this whole new perspective which means that everything that they were getting stuck on before just isn't relevant anymore you know there's like major big changes that people can make um, and you get to be a witness to that as a coach, which is an amazing and humbling experience, um, especially if we do it the soul-based coaching way. And I, this is one of the things that um, is so important in the workshops that we teach. It's that we have this image of coaching, which is, it, it does come from a more masculine paradigm where it is all about analyzing what's going on for people. It's about um, trying to work out, so what is the best way out? In a way, it's about outsmarting them. It's about saying, ha, ah, I know the solution. You just have to do this. And then, you know, you're, re you're ready to roll and you won't have this problem anymore. And the thing is that when we approach people that way, we're not, we're doing it, um, them a disservice. And why? Because they're so much more than that. Um, and they're not, you know, they're not broken, they do not need fixing. And they have all this potential to make these changes within themselves. And why not help them see that and help them experience that? And when we do that, you know, it's, it's exactly what's completely key and fundamental in soul-based coaching, we see something very different. And also it makes us as coaches feel very, very differently. You know, when I started out coaching and doing executive coaching, there was this, there were two things that could easily happen. One was that I could go into sort of um, automatic mode right I would go into ah okay I hear you say this I've seen this before it fits into this model so what you need to do is this and this um, and we'd have a conversation about that and sure it could be helpful uh, and people could sometimes take a lot out of that and make things happen but <laughs> but there was something that I wasn't doing and I'll come back to that in a moment you see, the other thing that could happen easily is that when you're coaching from this paradigm that you feel that it's on you to find the quickest way into a solution. That you have to be the one that really easily sees, all oh, right, so this is what you need to do. This is how we're going to fix you. Um, and you take on a responsibility that really isn't yours. Uh, it can come with a lot of, um, <laughs> of self-doubt and a lot of... Um, anxiety for some people because they go into this role and they feel it's not right but they don't quite know what to do what else to do and these are the two things that really easily happen so either going on automatic pilot and offering the same solutions to people um, or going in overwhelmed and feeling the pressure and um, you know no matter what it what it um, looks like in you there's something about taking on a responsibility that isn't yours and taking away a responsibility that is theirs and this is so vital when it comes to coaching or being of support to people that we do not take their responsibility and their power away in any way because that is the disservice that we can easily do people you know and 
you you must have had this experience when you've been talking to somebody who has had lots of experience who you know could have had a lot to offer to you but and when they when they helped you or gave you gave you input to think about um, what happened was that you started to see them as the authority on you Do you relate to this on some level there was something that said she must know or he must know what he's talking about so I better get myself in line with that I and you know this is something that can happen very subtly but it will help people start to doubt themselves it will start make them think people outside of me right they have a different perspective professionals they think something about how I'm doing or, or what I'm not doing or how I'm feeling or not feeling or thinking or not thinking and they start to engage in this inner dialogue that is just not very productive and helpful whereas if we help people be in that dialogue with themselves and their own deepest wisdom their own soul knowing something very very different happens they start to inhabit their power they start to inhabit their knowing their own authority and that is something that is a very new experience for people and the really interesting thing is that you know when you st first start out working in this way you might think but, but you know what am i doing what am i what am i adding here do i do, do i not have to be super slim and smart um, and do i not have to uh, be super you know superhero um, to you know kind of tff, 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 make everything happen for everybody um, what what's left if i don't do that what is how can i be a professional and add true value for people when i don't go into fixing mode and this is how it's so beautiful to start to see what's possible with soul-based coaching when you really start to see holding space is a tremendous gift when we leave the talking to our clients it's not that we don't do anything that we don't say anything in soul-based coaching but it's a very different kind of being engaged in that conversation than you are aware of now and what happens when we do that is that we get to watch this power unfold this person to link into their deepest knowing and to start to engage and appreciate and respect and honor what is happening inside of them you know all of the feelings all of the thoughts that they've been having a gazillion times we start they start to see them for what they are they start to see the wisdom that is in there and they start to feel nourished by a much, much deeper layer that holds so many keys to what's possible and what could be different. And you know, those keys are not dependent on their logical minds. They're not dependent on their willpower. They're not dependent on their commitment. They're not dependent on how they sleep. <laughs> They're not dependent on what they've been up to. Um, they start to connect with that divinity inside of themselves and you know what when that happens something truly different happens and you will feel it in your energy and in the energy of the session in the energy of your clients and when that happens we are also as coaches in directly related sorry directly connected to source it is an experience that is hard to describe but once you're in it it is so nourishing it is so incredibly uplifting and it's also incredibly humbling because it's not up to us absolutely we make it possible so without us that journey for that client is not happening in that moment but it's not up to us it's something else that work that is working through us and through our clients mostly we're holding the space for that Shakti flow that's working through our clients and this is why everybody who learns to do this work says at the end of a session I feel nourished I feel refreshed I feel in awe of what's possible in life because every session is another surprise 
And the same is true for our clients. They go on big journeys in the time that we have together. And they know that when they come out of them, they have changed in a very fundamental way. And that is pure magic. It's magic in action. This is why I'm so, so happy to see people joining in our circle so that we get to have this time together. We get to have this journey together, six months deeply in connection with each other. Um, and you know, this is something else. It's when people say, but it's online, how can that work? I have to, re I have to be reminded that there's people that don't know about this. So this is why I'm thinking about it now and I should probably tell you about it. It's that the connections that we form online are incredibly deep because of the work that we do. It's so intense and so personal. It's not an online training where you watch some, you know, watch some videos and then you go out and do your own thing. No, this is an online training where we have live sessions every week and we talk, we practice, we reflect and we have the conversations that are the most important conversations to have. They are about what happens to us on our inside when we're coaching, when we're being coached. And we're learning to see how our skills weave this path, weave this possibility for people to get in touch with their deepest knowing. And you know what? Life just isn't the same after that. It really isn't. And I'm not saying it's all going to be, you know, sunshine and roses. <laughs> Because it's not, it's life, it has the hard parts, it has the you know, beautiful parts. But the way that you navigate life is not going to be the same again. And that, that is just such a gift. So, what is it that is the best feeling in coaching? It's this. It's seeing your clients unfold in ways that they did not seem, you know, held, hold as possible before. And it's also you feeling nourished in the work that you do and seeing that it can pay your bills. It really can. It can help you create your own livelihood. And throughout all of this, you get to be true to who you are. You get to hold yourself as sacred. And you get to see what an incredible difference that makes for how you feel about yourself and about life in general. It's also how step by step we're going to make a real difference in this world. So I invite you, I invite you into the circle. Come and join us and invoke because the doors are open for another couple of days so that you can start this September. I would love to hear, ooh, blackbird singing. I would love to hear what this touches in you, what possibilities it opens up for you, and any questions that you have. Tell us, share us, share your questions, share your fears, share your doubts, share your longings, and we'll have a conversation about all of that, and see if this is for you. <laughs>